Hey, you guys, my name is Sarah Lacko, and this is the Inspired Beta Show. I've always been fascinated about people's stories, their hardships, and how they overcame those hardships and come out on the other side, turning their pain into their power and sometimes even their passion, the true underdogs. So in this show, we get to meet those people, pick their brains, learn from them, and see what successes they have had from those hardships. So I'm very excited about today's guest. He is, okay, I'm not gonna tell you, but I'm excited. But anyways, we have a sponsor today and it is, let me get my microphone. This episode is brought to you by the Badass Backpacking Babes course. Empowering women through nature and immersing ourselves in the wilderness. Turning, taking back our power, our wild, our confidence, and badassness. Sign up with our women's backpacking course today. Save $100 on the course. And then that also makes it available for a discount on our retreat. So you can click on the description in the link in this episode. I couldn't keep the reporter sound going, but I tried. So anyways, I'm really excited for today's guest, super nerding out. I don't know if you know this about me, maybe you do, maybe you don't, but my plan, so excited, is to, when my kiddo graduates, which she does in, you know, 1.5 years, I'm going to be taking off in a van, living for at least a year in a van and traveling throughout the US and Canada. So that's my big goal plan here. And from that, I got to meet this very cool individual and we're going to get to pick his brain. So I am van nerding out just a little. So friend, please introduce yourself and tell us what you do. Hello. That's a, that's one heck of a, an introduction. Um, yeah, my name is Paul Shear, and I, uh, after losing my job, I taught myself how to build camper vans and I sold well, I'm working on selling the second one right now, um, but I've been doing that for about two-ish years, year and a half, maybe, um, and now I'm focusing more on the education side, so I'm going to swap or switch from doing the luxury builds and start doing, like, budget-friendly builds and actually teach people how to do it, so it's uh, it's exciting. I'm excited for the, the switch, but... Yeah, yeah, that's awesome, and I'll definitely have things to learn from you in that process when I do my switch of living in a home to living in a van <laughs> yeah i was gonna say i actually didn't know uh i mean you had mentioned you wanted a camper but that sounds like an awesome plan that's what i want to do and that's what a lot of people that follow me want to do or, or are starting to follow me want to do so there's there's a lot of people that want to do that and my goal is to help make that more attainable more affordable because the whole van life thing has just kind of been it's it seems like it's only for the retired now so i want to try to change that Absolutely. And there is a lot of, like, once I started diving in deeper about van life, there really is like a ton of people doing this. There's a ton of people that want to do this. And then there's a ton of people that find it interesting. And so, yeah, it is pretty cool. I didn't realize like how big of a community it kind of is. Yeah, there's a, there's a lot, there's a lot of people doing it, obviously, and there's a lot of people trying to vlog about it and share about it. And it's a cool community that I just kind of became a part of. Like I've been building the vans for, like I said, it was summer of 2020. So yeah, we're coming up on like two years. Um, but I just started like marketing Instagram and YouTube and stuff. And there's just, it's a cool, it's a really fun community, whether they're in it or they want to be like, whether they have a van or they want to build a van, it's a, it's a big community and everyone's, I mean, when you think about the people you meet traveling, they're all pretty like high energy and nice. And that's kind of what that community is. And it's, it's a big one. It's, it's yeah. fun. I, I just kind of got my feet wet in that community and it's, it's been, it's been fun. That's awesome. I love it. So we're going to dive into your story because, you know, you mentioned that you've been doing this for two years. So we're going to start diving deeper into that, which I'm really excited about because we've, talked briefly on it so whenever we do a show I do like a pre-interview and we it's like a 15 minute call because I don't like diving in deep until the actual interview so we're going to do that right now so Paul I would love to know like what did your childhood look like 
brief us briefly tell us like you know what was it like for you growing up yeah so my childhood wasn't super eventful um i'm i was in a great family i still am um parents are together brother sister um grew up in like an la suburb it's a nice little middle class community and um you know it's interesting actually i was thinking about this because i was kind of trying to prepare some things to talk about and it's interesting because i've been talking to my girlfriend about it like growing up money wasn't an issue like we weren't wealthy or anything but like my dad was making you know a good living my mom could stay at home and take care of us and very grateful for that nice community um but now moving forward i'm 26 now and for the last four years like my parents have actually been struggling and like they're not to get super deep into it but like it's it's just interesting to see the juxtapositioning i guess just growing up with money and now like one of my motivators is to like help retire them so like it i don't know it's just interesting to grow up not like i said we weren't rich or anything but like we always had food on the table and like sports were paid for and things and dad had a good job um but yeah all that kind of changed so it's interesting now being older and seeing that kind of flip and now I like the responsibility of trying to help them out. It feels a little heavy sometimes. Granted, I don't tell them that because they would want me to not worry about it, which they're going to see this. So I guess we're going to have that conversation. But, <laughs> um, but yeah, it's just interesting. It's it's a funny, I've heard people talk about it on podcasts and now I'm seeing it in real life. And it's, um, yeah, it's just interesting to see that change because long story short my dad was working in hollywood as an editor and uh, like post-production artist and he did well he went in moved to la from texas with no experience and networked his way into a job and was there for i think like 20 years um realized he hated it and just didn't want to do it anymore so he's been doing some freelancing and like trying to find he's been working on a project and we don't need to get into that but um long story short yeah he left that job and, and money's been kind of tight since that depleted um but how that started actually so we when i graduated high school he quit his that's when he quit his job and we actually bought or they bought a fifth wheel trailer and sold our house and then as a family we spent 10 months traveling the us so it's kind of funny how that turned into what i'm doing now whether it was consciously or subconsciously like we spent 10 months traveling as a family and now here I am building campers for people. <laughs> and that's not a, a, that's not by mistake either. Like I'm sure that gave you like a good dose of like, you know, wanting that van life or seeing it and getting that experience. Like over those 10 months, was it super cool and you enjoyed it and all the things or what? Yeah. I mean, I was pretty young. I was, uh, 18. Um, but yeah, I enjoyed it a lot. It was, you know, it had its hardships because we're all living in this trailer as a family of five with a dog and a cat. But um, it was, yeah, it was super fun. And some of the best memories we have as a family was during that year or 10 months. And uh, yeah, it's just interesting that now here I am building campers. I don't remember making the connection, but obviously looking back, I'm like, yeah, that definitely played a played a role. Well, and I literally was just talking to someone the other day of like just kind of their past and like what they do now, but they never were like actually even interested in that thing prior, but they were exposed to it. And like now that's what they do as a living. So it's interesting. Like they are, there are these things that when we're in our younger years, we're exposed to these things when we don't really like second guess it or whatever but it, it resurfaces and it comes back. And I think it's like very cool how that happens. And it's just super interesting. Yeah, for sure. And I have a handful of examples, like when I reflect where I see it too. I mean, that's just one of them and that's a major one, but just right. funny. life's a weird journey. Like that it's sounds, trippy. It sounds foo-foo and cliche, but no. it's like things circle back and you stop doing one thing just to realize in a couple of years, all that experience that you thought was not useful is now totally playing a role in what you're doing. And it's just interesting. Yeah. Totally. I completely agree. Um, and I love your deeper why, like of what is also like helping you do this. Like, obviously you're passionate about it and you obviously like love what you're doing. But then it's always cool to like have that deeper why, like retiring your parents. Sometimes it's a wife trying to retire her husband or it's a husband trying to retire her, his wife or, you know, 
send a kid to college. Like there's so many different things, but when you have that deeper why, it just makes it so much more than like just about us. And so it kind of helps fuel that, which is super cool. So. Yeah. The, the why is super important. Um, it's, I mean, some days I'm more motivated than others, but overall it's kind of what gets you up in the morning. I feel like, and it's not just, I mean, retiring my parents is a big one, but I got selfish desires too. And everyone does. Absolutely. But I mean, I want to own my own time and I've wanted to be an entrepreneur, own my own business for a while. And this is just the first thing that actually clicked. This was not the first thing I tried doing, believe it or not. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's your why is super important. You know, what's, what's getting you through the day. Cause if it's just money, it's not, that's not going to do it. Cause I've actually found that to be true with these vans. Like, you know, these, these luxury builds I do, or it's a lot of work and it's a lot of pressure to, with the, uh, to sell it with such a high price tag. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I was kind of doing it cause I was, I wanted a camper for myself. So I thought it was interesting. The timing worked out, pulled the trigger glad I did it. And then on the second van, I was like, I don't know, I'm, I'm just kind of chasing a check now. And um, yeah, that's why I'm switching to the educational side, because I think it'll be way more fulfilling and, and, and more fun, more a, a, a better why, I guess. Also. Yeah. Like uh, wanting to actually help people and having people get inspired. And I don't know, it's just, I'm really excited to get started on that. I need to sell this van first, but I got some good news on that. So Hopefully that's happening soon yeah yeah for sure I like good news yeah so thanks for kind of walking us through your childhood um but also too like right before your hardship right before things got kind of like difficult for you um where it came to like a turning point to like bring me back to like where you were mentally physically uh, what kind of person were you, what, what, how were you right before that hardship? Yeah, sure. So like I said, I've been trying for years to get ideas to click and, you know, you go all in on one idea and you're all excited about it and then it doesn't pan out and it's disappointing. And, you know, I don't know, long story short, I like, I've been trying a lot of ideas. I went for like a social media marketing thing. And then that took me I like marketed an aviation page cause I used to want to be a pilot and I actually was going to flight training for that. Um, that was like my college gig decided I didn't want to do that cause it was just a lot of money and I didn't want to do it. Stopped doing that. Um, made the aviation page, marketed it pretty well. And then it connected me with a pro skier up in Canada, um, Rory Bushfield. So I moved up there cause I wanted to make a YouTube channel with him. And I had no experience. I was just, an, I had minimal experience editing, but not filming at all. And I just bit off way more than I can chew. But I went up there for two months, um, completely flopped. It was an awesome two months. It was super fun. It was like backcountry exploration in uh, British Columbia. And like, he was a pilot and skier. And so we were just snowmobiling and it was super fun, but I did not deliver on anything that I promised. <laughs> um, and then I actually broke my leg. Uh, I dislocated my ankle and broke my leg when I was up there. And so that sent me home. And then that was truly a turning point for me. That's what I'm getting at. Um, you know, I spent like three months, two and a half months in bed, pretty much just taking painkillers. I mean, I wasn't like abusing them. They were prescribed um, and they helped with like the pain. And then once the pain went away, it kind of helped me just relax while I had the cast on. Um, but yeah, just after those two and a half months, I lost a bunch of weight, which I'm already a really skinny guy. So like, just really didn't like what I saw in the mirror. And like, on top of the injury, I also was like embarrassed because I was publicly posting about all the things I was going to do in Canada. And then, you know, none of that played out. So um, all of that turned into me taking, finally taking exercise seriously. Um, sorry, I'm getting a little sidetracked, but it all it's, it's all time back. But that's when I started actually working out. Um, and like, I started running a lot and I started doing like 20 mile runs after like six months of running and going to the gym a lot. And I started to put on muscle that I never had. Like growing up, I was a scrawny kind of self-conscious kid. Didn't like taking my shirt off, started putting on weight, uh, in a good way and like running a lot. And all of that kind of played a huge role. Cause I had this thought in my head of like, whether it's conscious or subconscious, I, 
just wasn't very confident. I didn't think I could put on muscle and stuff. And then I did. And like, I was never a runner. I didn't know I could run 20 miles, you know, just with headphones in. Um, and I did. So it's like those little stepping stones all add up. And then once I was, so during all that, I got a job at a restaurant busing tables. And I did that for a year. Um, still wanted to be an entrepreneur. just wasn't sure how I was going to make it work. So I picked up that job and just kind of worked as many shifts as I could and saved all the money I could while just keeping my eyes and ears open, just looking for something to do um, like entrepreneurial wise. And uh, that's when COVID started. So in March of 2020 is when I lost that job. And then I spent like a month and a half kind of dabbling in the idea of like renovating a van because I noticed um, car prices were super low because people were holding on to their money and no one really, you know, global pandemic, no one was spending money. Um, so I started researching vans and I saw the price of uh, a hollow van was super low and the price of a camper was super high because people wanted to work remote and travel and things were on lockdown so they could be on the road. Um, so yeah, that's kind of where that turned around. I know um, you had reached out because I mentioned I lost my job and like, and then started this business, which is all true. But honestly, the true turning point for me was coming home from Canada with like the broken leg because losing my job was tough, uh, but it wasn't, I was, I was busting tables. It wasn't like a career job for me. So losing that was a good thing. Cause then I had time on my hands. I had all the money saved up. And then also with unemployment coming in, cause I literally couldn't work. Um, that helped fund things. And it's just all the timing kind of worked out. Um, so that was a long spiel, but I hope that all tied together and made some sort of sense. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Um, and take us back like to that lowest point where you said you broke your ankle. Take us back to that lowest point and what, where were you like, okay, things need to change. Like you said, you made that change. You started like, you know, putting on the weight and getting better, but what, what was that, that just clicked in your head that was like, you know what, I can't do this anymore. I can't feel this way about myself anymore or whatever, what did you do to help pull yourself out of that? Sure. So I just didn't like, not who I was, because I was still a good person and I still had big ideas and stuff. I didn't like right. how I was living. I didn't like how I was feeling, how I was waking up. Um, I remember specifically, this is funny, because I was living with my parents. I remember telling my mom I woke up at like noon or something. This is when I had the cast on. And she, I forget what she said, but I was basically saying like, oh, at least my day's shorter. Cause I was just like counting the days until I could get my cast off. And I said it kind of jokingly, but it was true. And looking back, like, yeah, what a sad, sad thing to say. Um, but to answer your question, like it was just, I just really didn't like how I was feeling, what I, how I looked in the mirror. Just, um, I specifically remember getting in the shower and like I had my cast on. So I'm like lifting my leg. I'm sitting, so I'm like lifting my leg into the shower, but I need to keep the cast out. And like, not to get graphic, but like, you know, it was like all my leg, like fat or skin was just like hanging off the bone. Like not, mm -hmm. know, it sounds gross, but like when you think about like an old person's arm, you know, that kind of like sags, like being a 20, uh, what was I like 23 or 24 and like seeing that in my leg, granted it was my broken leg, like it's normal, but I just, it was just things like that where I was just like, I am disgusted kind of like not with the person I am. Cause like I said, I still was proud of who I was, but like just no confidence, lost a bunch of weight. Um, wasn't really eating that much cause I was taking the painkillers and then the painkillers also have their own side effects and um, room was a mess, just stuff like that. Um, and then another turning point too, I don't know if you're familiar with um, David Goggins, but um, big motivational guy, ultra runners, like doing just crazy things physically um, and mentally. And my friend turned me on to a podcast he was on and then that turned me on to a book that he wrote. And so that all tied in too. Um, but yeah, just emotionally, physically, I was not feeling good. And right. I don't know how to put that into other words, but it was just, it wasn't good. I, I needed to change that. So I started like going on, even when I had the crutches towards the end, I started going on like long walks every day with the crutches. And then when I got the cast off, I'd try to walk like a mile and a half a day, even though my leg was like super stiff and all those little baby steps turned into 
you know, wherever I am today, I guess, but yeah, just one step a day. That's, that's funny. Cause it was literally me taking a step with my stiff leg, but, um, yeah, just, I think we overestimate, uh, what's the saying? It's like, we underestimate what we can do in six months and overestimate what we can do in a month. Just like taking a step each day and then looking back 12 months or six months from then and being like, Oh damn, I'm actually doing way better than I was back then, whether it's a business or physical health, mental health, whatever it is, diet. It's, um, yeah, that's kind of, that's kind of how I got there. And I love how you say that too. Like one of my favorite quotes is, um, you know, a thousand mile journey begins with a single step. And it's so true. Like sometimes we just look at like that bigger goal that we have or the bigger thing that we want. And we just look at that and it just seems so not obtainable because we're just, we're not thinking about just that single step. Like you, like on your crutches, taking the single steps and going for the, those walk with those crutches. Like that was your single step going towards that th- thousand mile journey of like where you wanted to go. And so it's always super um, inspirational when we can realize like, yeah, we want this bigger thing, but it, it's all those little things that get us to the, that bigger thing. So I really dig how you talk about that. Yeah. Um, thank you. And, and just real quick, that ties in too with like the van build. Cause not like, I didn't have any experience. I didn't own any tools when I started. So it was like a super daunting task. Once the van was actually in the street and paid or took a loan out for like, um, and you know, there's so much to do. And what I would do is just make a to-do list of what I thought I could do today, you know? And then tonight I would be like, make a to-do list of what I think I could do tomorrow. And normally the to-do lists were a little over ambitious, but like, mm-hmm. I just found that like, if I could just do this today and then tomorrow I'll do that. And then sooner rather than later, it's like, you know, four months go by and it's like, oh, you know, I'm actually almost done with this thing. So it, that it's very relevant, yeah. What great advice too. It's like, yeah, what can you do today? That's great advice. It's super simple, but totally relevant to getting to your goal. And I can very much relate to being over ambitious with my to-do list and all the tasks and whatever. Um, So making sure that you don't have the overwhelming to-do list, you know, just some of those things. And like you said, just for today. Um, so it sounds like what helped you along your way was, you know, just taking those single steps and some motivational content. Was there anything else that helped you along the way? Um, I mean, yeah, it, it was, it's funny looking back cause I haven't really dug this far into what I've done aside from when we were on the phone. Um, I just, I don't know, for a long time, like I said, I wanted to own my own business and like maybe not own my own business but just own my own time whether that be an online source of income or an actual business or whatever it is I just I always knew I wanted to do that and I wanted to do it well and I came to the conclusion that if I could take a hold of my like physical health which ultimately affects your mental health then I think I could get a much better grasp on doing things that are hard you know, like starting a business or pulling the trigger on a van and like wanting to build it or um, it's just little stuff like that, like all the motivational books or speeches or podcasts or whatever. I mean, they only go so far, but they do help. Um, And I noticed like I would study the habits of these people and they all were in good shape, whether it was running or lifting weights or and I, I think it's true because I I'm a mess if I don't exercise and I go through periods where I don't exercise, but like my f- mental health is all the stress and like depression and stuff, it all just gets amplified if I don't exercise. So I know I kind of already touched on that, but that, that was a huge driving force is like, not only does the physical exercise help with the mental, your mental health and like struggling with all the daunting tasks, like that big to-do list and stuff. But once you actually start getting milestones when you're doing whatever exercise it is, that also builds confidence. So it's like this you know, it, it feeds on each other. So then all of a sudden, you know, before you know it, you're, for me, it was like, I bought a van and it's like, okay, here we go. Like 
all of a sudden I was so confident that I thought I could build out a van, but it worked, you know, and it doesn't have to be a van for whoever's listening to this or, you know, you with your backpacking courses or something, but all of a sudden you find yourself in a position where you're like, yeah, I could do that instead of like, oh man, how would I be able to do that? So that was, that was the main driving force for me. Well, and two, um, like you getting back in shape and you focusing on, you know, working out and whatnot, that was also your like single step to being an entrepreneur. And a lot of times too, I think it's really important for us to like know who our heroes are, know who we look up to and imitate that, like, you know, mirror it. How did they get there? What does that look like? And, and start working towards that. So, I mean, that's exactly what you did, which is very cool. Yeah, it's funny. I saw it, or I don't know if it was a real or quote, or I saw something the other day and it was like, if you don't need help achieving your goals, your goals aren't big enough. And I thought that was interesting. I know it kind of like, it hit me pretty good. Cause like, yeah, I kind of have been doing stuff on my own, but like, had I not been reading the right books or listening to the right podcast, because the internet's crazy. I mean, everybody knows how big it is, but like you can take someone who's super successful and listen to them give advice like that in itself is a crazy tool because you learn how they got there. And like, you know, it's, you can almost pretend like they're your friend and, and they're, you're networking with them and like picking their brain, even though you're not actually asking questions, but if you listen long enough, they'll probably answer most of your questions. So it's, it's really interesting because I, I found a lot of help in that, just reading books and listening to people talk. Honestly, um, and just someone that I had on recently, like that's how she helped herself was like just, you know, the self-help books and, you know, in the, all those things like, and it's about like surrounding yourself around those things that help elevate you instead of help bring you down like it's almost like yeah like you said like it's almost like you feel like you're friends with them right and like back in the day if you had like a crappy group of friends who maybe weren't doing like the best things maybe I shouldn't say crappy but maybe weren't making the best decisions or and maybe not like wanting more and wanting better and wanting to grow like then you're not going to do those things like so it does you know, surrounding yourself around the things that you want to be and how you want to be and what you want your life to look like, really exposing yourself just helps you grow into those things. And I love that quote that you just talked about because yeah, that is a mic drop kind of quote and very true. I'm all, and one of my favorite quotes is, and I've said it like probably a billion times on the show, is like, if you're not growing, then you're dying. Like, it's all about continuing to grow and to continue to, you know, level up in your life because, you know, it, when things get like too stagnant, it just, you know, it's like, man, it doesn't feel that great. So it's cool to just like keep learning about yourself, keep growing and keep going for the things you want. And sometimes that keeps evolving, like you with the van and building the van selling it and now you've grown into teaching people how to do it for themselves it's just you know just because we choose one thing doesn't mean we have to stay there forever and we just continue to grow through it yeah it's funny any part-time job or full-time job I had I don't think I ever stayed there for more than a year and a half because even the good ones like that paid well and I just I get like itchy feet I, I got to do something else. And it's funny seeing that now play a role in my own stuff that I'm like, I, you know, made this little gig for myself and I'm already like, all right, what can I do that's on the next level or switch it up, you know, and, and it's always improving, or at least it's, I'm trying to improve. It's not like I'm ever going down a step, but yeah, it's just funny. It's funny how that works. So I'm smiling and laughing to myself because like what you're saying, totally the same person how you talked about like switching it up. I was, I was in an interview one time and the, you know, the CEO or whatever was like, you know, I've noticed that you've switched jobs. Like my, my roundabout was like a year and I'm like, well, yeah, you know, I guess I just like to like switch it up and learn and go to different places. And she laughed and she ended up hiring me probably only because I, you know, she liked me, you know, cause I obviously didn't have the 
best track record of like staying somewhere for five years or whatever but it is like those entrepreneurs really do like to switch it up and change things up so it's funny that you say that so I'm like laughing in the background yeah it's always uh I mean, I'm kind of new at this, but it's it seems to always be changing. <laughs> mm-hmm. That's what makes it exciting. Hey, um, Sarah, I'm sorry. I know you don't edit these, but someone parked next to me is playing some music. Is that is that doing anything? No, it just gives you a cool background, I guess. No, okay. I can't really. Well, just, yeah, I can put some headphones <laughs> in. But, sorry to interrupt. I just someone. No, no worries. Music. Yeah, we don't edit this, and so it like. It just comes at you raw. Nah. Um, so do tell us about like um, your successes and what you've accomplished. Like you, you've touched on it, um, but I just like to, you know, bring like awareness to what successes you've had. And it's not even has to necessarily like be about the van, but like just in general, what from your hardships and the things that you've had to go through um, and overcoming what accomplishments and what successes have you seen from that? Yeah. So, I mean, the first thing, I mean, I know I keep beating a dead horse, but the first thing was exercise and I won't go Mm -hmm. deep into that again, but like just running longer than I thought, or like putting on more muscle than I thought I could. Those were some first early steps of like finally achieving something that was, that meant a lot to me. Um, And then after that, I mean, just building out the first van, like, like I said, I touched on it. I didn't have any experience. Like I worked for an electrician for a couple months, but honestly, I just would crawl under homes and like run a wire. I didn't really learn anything. So having no experience and not owning any tools, like I bought all the tools that I needed as I needed them because I didn't know what I needed until I knew I needed it. And just teaching myself how to build a little tiny home, just looking on YouTube, like that to me was incredible. Like not to pump up my own tires, but just like internally, like I, I was like, holy, you know, I don't want to swear, but like it, it was, it. holy shit. <laughs> like it was, it was gnarly. Like, and you know, I initially wanted to sell it. I was thinking, I was like, if I could sell it for like 70,000, I'll make, you know, at least like 15,000. And to me, that was like a really big number. Cause I've just, you know, I was busting tables and like, I had never had more than like six or seven thousand saved up so i was like that would be cool and then when the project was over with it looked way better than i thought it would and i sold it for eighty two thousand. so it was like just confronting a task that was extremely daunting and like like i said every day just like don't focus on the end because you're going to get all stressed out and i did a lot but like i would try my best to just focus on today's to-do list and over the course of it was about five months of like really going at it all of a sudden I had a project in front of me that looked way better than I thought it would and I sold it for a significant amount more than I thought I could so it was like that to me was and it still is the biggest accomplishment and I hope it doesn't stay the biggest accomplishment but that was a big one for me and then it was also hard to repeat the process because all the excitement was gone it was like I mean not all of it but it wasn't I knew what to do and it had its own new challenges of learning. Um, But it was like, I was just now building out a second van for sale. So like I started kind of dragging my feet because I wasn't like super excited about it. I just needed to finish and I wanted to be done and like pushing through that and finishing. That was also a big accomplishment, which sounds, I don't know if I'm describing that appropriately, but like it was hard to repeat the process because it wasn't this new exciting like, like, like in the first van, when I finished like the floors or something, it was like, oh, wow, these floors look really good. Like, I didn't know I could make floors look that good. And it was really easy. They're like tongue and groove planks. It's not like I'm a scientist over here, carpenter, but <laughs> um, it, things like that, they were little like triumphs that would make me feel good. And with the second van, I was just repeating everything. And then if there was one little mistake, I'm like, oh man, like, I knew how to do this and I made a mistake anyway versus the first one it was like oh of course I made a mistake like I don't know so so they they both had their own challenges and they both had their own sets of accomplishments 
But off the top of my head, those were the big ones that still stick with me. I have the the first van I sold. I kept one of the plates, the license plates, and I framed it in my room because I sold it to someone in Florida. So you didn't need these California plates anyway, but I thought that was cool. I'm hoping I can do it with this one too, but we'll That's see. awesome. Yeah. Well, and too, like what you say, it is so true. Like sometimes we are so scared of the thing we want to do because of fear of failure. And so then we don't do anything. But when you start to lean in and you start to take those steps towards what you're trying to do and you learn and you overcome, like, like you wanted to get your self-confidence back when you lean into that, like you really do, you get so much confidence and it's empowering and just from leaning in and going for the thing you want and just, you know, putting that one foot in front of the other. So yeah, that totally makes sense. I really dig what you say actually about it. It's very cool. And what very cool accomplishments too. Like you didn't have a background in being an electrician or carpenter, you know, all the different things that go into like building a van, which is a lot by the way. Um, and I only know, cause I've kind of like geeked out like down van life, you know, tunnels. Um, so that's the only reason why I do know, but I mean, there's, there's so many different aspects to learn, but you learn them, you did them and you had no background in them. So it's just so inspiring for, you know, people like us and all of us, you know, to just lean into that thing that you want, whether you have the education or the knowledge or experience, like if you want it bad enough, then you figure out a way and, and you just overcome and you just go for it. So I yeah. really dig that. Yeah. And just adding on to that too, like what's really cool. And I found to be true in my own experience is like the small steps, you know, lead to bigger steps and then bigger and bigger. So it's like, you know, I, I built up enough confidence to be like, you know, I could probably build out a van and like, granted, I had the safety blanket of like worst case scenario, I could sell it for how much it cost me, you know, and just not make any profit and learn a little or a lot. Um, but the cool thing about that is like, so I built up enough confidence to think I could build out a van and then I did it. And then when I'm walking away from the van, it's like, oh, okay, well, what else am I capable of? And not to talk about me, I'm just mean like people in general. Like, I don't think I'm special or anything. Like I just, once you achieve something, it's like, okay, well, what else can I do? And I think that's applicable to anyone. It's not, I guess that's mm -hmm. what I'm trying to say is I don't think I'm some, I'm not better than anyone. Um, it's, it's just cool. Cause it's like, okay, well, what's the next step? And, and that's what we were talking about earlier, how it's constantly evolving and stepping up and turning into new things. And it all starts with those little steps and they turn into bigger steps. And then all of a sudden you're doing a marathon, you know, whether it's running or whatever, it's like, oh, okay, damn. Well, a year ago I could barely run a mile. And now I just, you know, ran a whatever marathon. Like it's just little things like that. I mean, I'm using running as an example, but then you finish the marathon and you're like, oh, wow. Okay. Well, could I do an even longer race? Or it's just, it's interesting. It's, it's, it's a cool process. It really is. And it just builds on itself. Like you say, it really does build on itself. And maybe those like initial steps are really hard to take, like you said, but once you start to take those initial steps, those little baby steps become a lot bigger and then they're leaps and then they're jumps. And then it's, you know, running 20 miles or whatever as like a metaphor. Sure. Um, yeah, so totally. So we're coming to, we've come to our wrap up question and I love this one. Um, it's based off like your hardships and your successes. So based off of those, how do you think we can do better? Maybe do better as an as a individual, do better as a community or society. Based off what you've learned in your own life, how do you think we can do better? Yeah, so there's this guy, um, Jocko Willink. He has a podcast. He's like an ex-military guy. Um, but he's got a little small clip on YouTube called Good. It's like three minutes if you should look into it. I'm going to rewatch it after this probably because I watch it every couple months. But he talks about, and I'm going to butcher it, but he, the, the general idea is like, he talks about when things go wrong, you need to physically say out loud, good. Like, cause it, when things go wrong, it gives you the opportunity to, to find a solution or to grow. And it's funny how I've been listening. I've, I watched it every couple of months for the last couple of years. And even in the last couple of months, it's been extremely relevant. Cause like, 
in my own experience, this van is taken, like I finished in December and it should sell next week. I have someone very interested and it's, yeah, it, but I won't go into that, but um, three months was a long time because this is my income. So like, I'm not, I didn't, I haven't made any money since I sold the first van. And like, I thought it was going to sell and I wanted it to sell really quickly, but I'm glad it didn't because I had so much time on my hands the last couple of months and I forced myself to stay busy. So I started looking into like, uh, marketing Instagram and marketing YouTube. And like, that's when I started the YouTube and started making reels on Instagram. And now it's like, it's blown into this thing where I have like followers now and, and they're excited to learn. And had I sold the van immediately, I think I would have just jumped into another one and like not probably enjoyed that or who knows where that would have taken me. But like, I'm just, I'm happy that that happened. Cause I had the opportunity to have all this time on my hands where I could start researching other things. And now I have this whole other road in front of me that uh, road, that's funny, no, no pun intended, but um, <laughs> uh, it, I just had this whole other path in front of me that would not have been there had the van sold so quickly. And it doesn't feel like that when it's happening, like going back to my broken leg, like it sucked. I hated it. But like looking back, it's like, well, that was, that was good, you know, cause I look what came out of it and it's, it's a powerful thing. And, and to tie that into your question, I think that would be something that I would, some advice I'd give to someone listening or someone working towards something. It's like, it's hard to do it in the moment. It's definitely way easier said than done. But like, if you can physically say good, you can rewire things a little bit and start thinking like, okay, well, this is really shitty. This really sucks. But like, how can I turn this into a positive and, and, you know, you can take the worst scenario, which we don't, uh, yeah, it's just, there's always something that can come out and, and you might not realize it for a couple of years. It might take a while, but if you can turn all those bad moments into somewhat progressive, positive moments, pretty soon you start getting that momentum and it's like, okay, well, it, you end up somewhere that you're proud to be. And that, that would be my advice. I love it. Well, and I, uh, love this quote too like everything happens for a reason like I've heard that quote since I was like a little little kid and so, like you said sometimes it's really hard like when you're in it when you're going through it and you're like why is this happening to me or you know all the things that we think of when we're going through really difficult things but I like how you talk about you know thinking of like good like for me, it's thinking like, okay, how can I learn from this? How is this putting me in a different direction? Um, you know, because everything happens for a reason. And like you said, it doesn't, we don't always know that reason like right away, but it really does. It does, it puts us on that different road, that different path to where we're meant to be and where we're meant to go. Had you not had those hardships and the, you know, the previous people that have been on here, had they not had those hardships, it might not have you know, they might not be living their best life. They not might not be, you know, doing things that they're passionate about or helping other people and all the different things. So what great advice um, for all of us to remember. So thank you for that. And also you can send me that link too and we can put it in the show and people can check out, you know, that good video too. And, and that might be something they get to watch every couple of months too, like you. I hope so. We'll definitely link it because it's it's a good yeah. one. I, I didn't that was those weren't my quotes. I just took that into my own context. But absolutely, it's, it's a good one. Yeah, we'll send we'll have it in the in the show description. Um, so thank you so much for being on the show. This was a lot of fun. I love diving deeper into. I, mean, I get to see what you do all the time on Instagram, but you know, it's super cool to like learn more about you and, and find out where your drive comes from and your direction and how you got to where you are. So it's very cool to see that. So thanks so much for sharing that with all of us today. I appreciate you. Yeah. Thank you so much. It was fun to look back and talk about things and hopefully I had some insight to share, but I appreciate it. Thank you for having me on. Yeah, absolutely. So how can people connect with you? Um, we'll have the descriptions and links, um, how to connect with you below, but tell us where we can find you just the same. Yeah, please. So it's just Instagram and YouTube right now. It's just Paul Shear with an underscore. So it's P-A-U-L-S-C-H-E-E-R with a little underscore at the end. And the Instagram and YouTube is the same. So 
I try to stay super up to date on the Instagram and then the YouTube is going it, to, it's already started obviously, but it's going to start really rolling once I get the next van to work on. Cause I'm going to have the step-by-step tutorials and it's uh, the YouTube still a work in progress, but it's new. I've had it for about six weeks now. So very cool. But yeah. Just Instagram and YouTube. And I just like to say, like, if you go to Paul's Instagram, he has a very huge following, um, but he still just the same is incredibly grounded. And I reached out to him and he responded to me. And so, you know, if you do want to reach out to him, that's a great place to do it. And he, you know, he's great about getting back. So thank yeah. you so much, Paul, for being on here. Thanks for letting us pick your brain. and. Yeah, this was very cool and exciting. So thank you so much. You're very welcome. Thanks for having me. It was cool for me too. Absolutely. Awesome, you guys. Well, have a great day. I hope you got to learn lots um, and you know took some notes. And it's always good for us to learn from each other and grow with each other. It's always very cool to do that. So anyways, you guys, much love, good vibes, and we'll see you later. Bye, you guys.